a super pod of over a thousand common dolphins whistle excitedly as they travel in hot pursuit of a shoal of fish. This is a large pelagic species of dolphin, highly adapted to life in the deep open ocean. They move at speed in large social groups, each member contributing to the coordinated attack. And once the prey is rounded up and cornered, they each take their turn in getting their fill before returning to the deep ocean to continue their journey. Dolphins are allemaal ongelooflijk intelligent dieren voor wie die mens nog altijd komen ze maar een zachte plekje gehad het. En hoe kom nie? Ons en hulle het heel wat in gemeen. Wel, so like het. Wat om die promenade hier in Seepunt as een voorbeeld. It's a buzzing place. Joggers, dog walkers and people generally playing, socializing and breathing in the fresh air. But it's also very special in terms of dolphin activity. This stretch of the coast boasts its very own residential dolphin species, one that prefers the calmer waters of those to the open ocean. And they, like us, come here to play, socialize, and breathe in the fresh sea air. This urban dolphin is called the heavy sides dolphin, and it only occurs on the west coast of southern Africa. Heavy sides belong to a genus of dolphin species that include the smallest dolphins in the world. They grow to only about half the length of the bottlenose dolphins we see often on the east coast and are Africa's smallest dolphin. They occur in pods of no more than 10 individuals and are considered to be very rare. Unlike the superpods of common dolphins which range globally, in the whole world the heavy sides only occur within a narrow band between Cape Point in the south and southern Angola in the north. This makes them entirely endemic to the Benguela ecosystem and a shining example of South African biodiversity. Look how they are But in spite of that they are here, right under our knees, they know that they are bitter min of their conditions in biology. And this can be the result that their protection and protection are seriously threatened. Because of a lack of data and knowledge, scientists from home and abroad are trying to piece together the puzzle of the little dolphin. In 2009, with support from the National Research Fund, the University of Hong Kong, in collaboration with the University of Pretoria's Marine Mammal Unit, began a five-year study into the heavyside dolphins of Granger Bay. Under the guidance of cetacean ecologist Dr. Lysak Kosmarski, Teams of students who followed the pods on the west coast, gathering information and data. Uh, this is really one of the least known cetacean species with uh, uh, hardly any solid information. We don't know about their daily life pattern, about their daily behavior. It's uh, listed by the World Conservation Union as data deficient and it really indicates the, the true status. What we do on our boat surveys is actually collecting uh, primary photographic records characteristic to, to an individual. So if you get a good, sharp, well-focused, uh, well-exposed image, we are collecting something in the form of an individual ID of a member of a local population. As different pods of dolphins arrive in the area, the team must be ready and alert. Today we have a busy day. They are everywhere. Three o'clock, we have six of them. Six o'clock, we also have six. And there are some at 11 o'clock. So coming up, it's almost 20. The technique is known as mark recapture and is highly practical for animals that spend most of their time under the water. Photographs of dorsal fins are analyzed. And they are distinguished by nicks, cuts, and shapes. These then form an ID much like your driver's license. Each year, the teams return to the study sites and they try to capture as many photos of dolphins as possible to see which ones have returned and if there are any new individuals in the society. So we build a catalogue of, uh, of individuals inhabiting the region 
and we can look into the interactions within a group, between the groups. We can evaluate a large range of population parameters. So we're actually learning of how the population functions in terms of the ecology of the region. Complementing the mark recapture work is genetic sampling to see what kind of gene flow exists along the dolphin's range. Gene variation is considered imperative to a species survival, as the genes hold the key information necessary to allow an animal to adapt to a changing world. Um, now I, I attached it to a little stopper, which then goes to the front of the sling, touch the surface of the, of the animal. Okay, took it from above. A thick, a thick layer of blubber surrounds the dolphins, so the tiny skim sample causes no harm. Hours of observation opened up a window into the life of the urban parts here of Granger Bay. They have very interesting behavioural ecology. They come closer inshore in the early hours of the morning and they assemble just offshore, right outside kelbets. In fact, often within kelbets. They love kelbets. They, they go into in between the kelbs, rubbing their body among kelbs. And then initially smaller groups start assembling into larger groups and they very dynamically split and join, what we call this dynamic fusion-fusion pattern. In layman's terms, it's kind of a meet and greet. Dolphins from different groups split up and socialize with others, thereby gaining a better sense of the population as a whole. This could help in terms of finding available food resources, predator detection, and mate selection. Their research will contribute greatly to our knowledge of a unique species on the doorstep of South Africa. But can we assume that the dolphins behave the same across the the dolphin? But as the dolphins are all the same. Now, this is a important question, because in the northern part of the Omfang, is the landscape there very different than here, where we now is. In the northern part of their range, the dolphins occur in a vastly different landscape where deserted beaches replace the buzzing promenades and the ghosts of forgotten mining towns replace the cityscapes. Here, Dr. Simon Elwin of the Namibian Dolphin Project is investigating the possible differences in behavior exhibited by the heavy silence in this region. I did my PhD work on heavy side dolphins down in South Africa with Peter Best uh, and we learned quite a lot about the animals there and I was very interested in working up here in the northern Benguela. The ecosystem here is quite different, there's more seasonality in it, much, more, much warmer in summer and colder in winter, whereas in South Africa it's a much more stable ecosystem. At the moment we're sitting in Guano Bay, which is just to the west of the town of, of Lidra. It's quite a protected bay, which is really makes it a lot easier for us to do the work here because it's an exceptionally windy environment here in Lidra. And the winds are predominantly from the south along the, the whole Benguela ecosystem. So because we have these north-facing bays, they're quite protected. And the dolphins seem to use them quite a lot, particularly up here in Namibia, uh, where they're socializing in the bays, they're also feeding. So it's really a high-density area for, for heavy sides dolphins. The protected bays offer the dolphins safety and security from the deeper oceans. Here, a group of mating dolphins frolic in the shallows. So in Nadinas, it's a small mating group. So it's, it looks to be three animals. It might be when they're just rolling on top of each other, possibly trying to gain access to the female. So the tail slapping is literally just the animals turning over on top of each other. They will sometimes tail slap the surface or the water, which seems to be a they did when they're agitated or excited. Uh, it's often context specific. So in this case they're clearly excited but it's because they're, they're making it. Besides the ID work and genetic sampling, Dr. Elwin's project makes use of hydrophones, underwater microphones that pick up sound over 24 hour periods. Dolphins can be identified by their unique whistles or clicks and because sound travels so far underwater, it can cover large distances. Information can be captured on different species, including dusky dolphins, another beautiful Benguela local. Just got a small group of dusky dolphins here, which we don't actually get too often in shore, that they, they tend to be further off. In Vulvus Bay, we hardly ever see them. We've seen them like three times in five years. So it's quite exciting to see a group like this in shore. 
combining the hydrophone data and satellite tags, the research has revealed three distinctly different daily life patterns for the dolphins in Cape Town, Luritz, and Volfus Bay. The urban pods spend their day inshore resting and then move almost 20 kilometers offshore at night to feed on baby hake. This is an incredible distance if you consider their individual home ranges are only about 80 kilometers. In Luderans, they stay within the base for almost 24-7, and at Volfus Bay, they feed inshore at night in high numbers. This is almost exactly opposite to the behavior in South Africa, and could be due to food resource availability and feeding strategies. The shallow water provides them with extra protection from predators such as sharks. They use a back-to-the-wall approach, as nothing can come at them from the bottom or sneak at them from the side. Dat is ongelooflijk hoe species optreden verschil van een gebied naar de volgende. Maar de grote vraag is natuurlijk: wat is de welstand van die riedolfijnen? We still don't have a reliable estimate of the population size. It's thought that Luderitz has around a thousand animals, making it the highest density area. But we have no historical record to know whether they have increased or decreased in number. We do know that many other species have suffered greatly on the west coast. A perfect example would be the African penguin. In 2009, their population levels were at the lowest on historical record. There can be no doubt that the greatest factor was the complete overfishing of the Benguela ecosystem. In 1970, the anchovy and sardine stocks had been decimated to almost extinction in Namibia, leading to the collapse of the fisheries. And as these fish stocks plummeted, so too did the animals that relied on them as food source. Could we only now be studying the last remnants of the heaviside population? And where is the protection? Heaviside dolphins are site-specific. They have a small area they visit, and this is their home and the West Coast is their only home in the whole wide world. Those in Balfus Bay and Cape Town are subjected to heavy boat traffic. Research has shown the change in behavior of some species when approached by boats. And yet, along the whole promenade in Cape Town or at the docks, there is not a single sign up to indicate their presence. Nou ja, die wereld is vol verrassings. Het is eigenlijk ongelooflijk dat in hierdie moderne tijd waar ons leef, dat soveel verborgen skatte is wat jy kan vind as jy net jou oog oopmaak. So volgende keer as jy hier op die promenade stap, kyk gerust uit vir Zuid-Afrika as een stedelike school van kleervolle klein heavyside dolfijne.